I'm gonna share with you the five things I do with each and every single email that enters my inbox so that I only ever have to touch each email once. First, the essentials. It's actually easier to maintain your inbox once it's empty than to get there in the first place. So let's do the simple stuff. Unsubscribe from every newsletter, notification list, and broadcast list that isn't absolutely essential. Second, strip email down to its core function. We have to stop using email for everything and start using it only for what it does better than any other tool, collecting new inputs. Third, we're going to set up your downstream systems. See, the reason your email is overflowing is that you likely don't have anywhere for it to go. Instead, all you need to do is set up these four essential productivity systems. A calendar app that syncs to every device. You need a task manager to capture, and this is the important part, link back to tasks that arrive in your email. Third, you need a reference app a digital notes app for storing files and key information. And finally, you need a read later app to save all the things that you wanna read or watch later. Step four, it's time to streamline your workflow. Instead of checking email before you start work, we wanna create a small habit that allows us to process quickly dozens of emails within 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. So then we can get to the real work without the feeling that there's a ticking bomb in our inbox. Step five, make triage decisions. The word triage just means deciding how to sort things. In seconds for each email, decide, do I, archive, reply, add it to my calendar, create a task, store it as a reference, or send it to my Read It Later app. There's only six possible options. If you do this right and consistently, you can set this up to happen with a single keyboard shortcut in moments. That is it. That's the steps of one touch to inbox zero. I'm Mark Honig and I am today's reluctant test subject. Mark is our director of content. He's pretty good at email and he's developed his own system. That's not bad, but he could do better. So we're going to go through the five steps and apply them in real time for you. So he can start being even more effective and spending his time on even more important activities. Okay, so I've got my Gmail open. It's ready for us to do what we have to. The first step is the basics. Are there any newsletters or recurring emails that you can unsubscribe from? Probably. I could search my inbox for like the word unsubscribe. That's probably smart. Unsubscribe. So Thomas, yeah, let's get rid of Thomas Frank. See ya. <laughs> Just getting in the spirit of it, Thomas. No offense, no offense. I've got to log in to unsubscribe. What should I do in this case? Well, you can see how this might take some time, especially, <laughs> especially if you don't regularly unsubscribe. Okay. Uh, you may need to set aside some time because you're right, they do sometimes make you jump through hoops. You have to, you know, open up a web page and then unsubscribe. You have to log in, all these different things. Well, here's a question too. So in theory, Alex Garcia makes a really amazing email list. What if I don't want to unsubscribe because that makes my heart hurt? Yeah, good question. In that case, I would create a separate inbox or a separate tab, depending on your email platform. What do I call that? I call mine reading. So anything that has articles, lots of text, or that I just kind of want to casually peruse, mm. uh, automatically gets forwarded to the reading tab. Let's see, so I am going to filter messages like these. Mm -hmm. So from Alex, create filter and then apply the label, new label. I like this, so reading. And apply it to all the matching conversations. Dope. So Alex just went into the reading and one day I might even give it a color. I don't need these weekly digests. Wow, that's actually really satisfying. Now it's time to strip email down to its core function. And this depends on each person, but I want you to turn off as many tools that have made email into anything more than just a linear inbox. Just looking at the screen, I see my chat. Go to the chat tab and then off. Perfect. Can you turn off the action categories? So in terms of our, like a priority inbox, you want me to basically have just two categories? Is that what I'm hearing? Or three? Three if you include the reading one that you created. So it's basically okay. important, reading, and other. Okay, cool. So important. I'm gonna, apparently I had that hidden, so I click show on that. But I would hide the other ones. Hide starred, hide snooze. Okay. Hide, hide. Hide scheduled. 
Drops is okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is what we what it yep. looks like over nice there. Nice and streamlined, nice and clean. Okay. All right, here we go. So there were some other things you can turn off, things like stars. Okay. Which is in settings, general tab. Okay, we've got stars. You can just set it to one star and then just don't use stars. Okay, cool, <laughs> perfect. Um, also personal level indicators. Okay, they're the personal level indicators. So we're gonna kill those. Okay. Next is categories, which is also in the same tab and I would hide all of them. Nice. Actually, I'm starting to feel pretty good about myself. I've done about half of this so far. Now we're finally ready to set up some downstream systems. If emails have nowhere to go, there's no place downstream to flow, they're, they're just gonna continue piling up. So we wanna create four of them. First is a calendar. Do you use a digital calendar? Yeah, we use Google Calendar. So I think, I think this is already set up just fine unless there's something more to do. Nope, as long as it exists and you know how to use it, we're awesome. good. Okay, great. Second is a task manager, a digital to-do list. I have this spread across a bunch of different things. So I think I wanna just start trying to do a dedicated to-do app rather than integrating it with my PKM. It looks like you had things on this computer and it looks like it's just fresh right now so I can just experiment and play with it. To use things effectively, there's two little things you need to turn on in the preferences. Okay, let's go to the preferences. Go to quick entry tab. Okay, so the first one is already turned on. It says enable shortcut for quick entry. And you can even test that out right now. Do control space. Whoa. This is a magical feature. I remember in my first professional job in San Francisco, my manager, his name was Charles, and we would be mid conversation and I would mention something I needed or wanted from him. He would turn to the side without even looking at his computer, hit control spacebar, type it while maintaining eye contact, <laughs> hit enter, and it would disappear and I would say, what the heck just happened? I like it. Um, so you can try out just, you know, typing something you have to do and then hitting save. Unsubscribe from the rest of my emails. Good. And now it appears right there in your inbox. Boom. There so we go. I'm basically all day long doing that to the point I'm probably creating five to 10 of those kind of little open loops every day. But there's another one, which is the second box there. Enable shortcut for quick entry with autofill. And you're gonna have to download a little plugin on their website. Just hit start download. Just takes a second. Just double click it. And then open, and there it is. So I wanna show you what this does. You can open any email. And while the email's open on your screen, hit control option space. Now, Ooh. witness the beauty of this moment. What just happened? <laughs> the app, the Things app, got the subject line of the email, which is highlighted there, which I always tend, tend to replace. But then in the notes just below, it has a unique link which if you click it anytime, anywhere, will open up this email. Nice. Let's try it. So things. So double click it and then click the link. And there it is. Awesome. Is this just Gmail or is it any web page? It's any web page. Dang. Yes. So this is where an app like Evernote that's been around for a while really shines. They have so many different ways of getting content into the program. For example, every single Evernote user has a customized special email address. What I recommend you do is save that address as a contact in your contact book, such as the contacts within Gmail, and save it with a name like Evernote Capture or something like that. So as soon as you get an email, you're looking at an email that you wanna save, you just hit forward, start typing say Evernote, it will autofill, you hit return, and then you hit send, and it's forwarded directly into your Evernote account. Go to account info, yeah. Okay, great. For some reason, they make you open up the site and then it's down there at the bottom, see it? Oh, awesome, cool. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to Gmail, I think was the next step, and make it a contact. I think you have to go to the, um, the grid of dots there. Okay, I think you're right, there it is. Create a contact. Your first friend. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so much less lonely. Thanks Evernote. It's just what I'm gonna call it, Evernote Capture. There's their email. How do we use this effectively? It sounded like there's some sort of wizardry beyond just adding them as a contact. Yeah, so find an email that has content you wanna save. Uh, let's go to that reading tab. Perfect. So what you can do since you have keyboard shortcuts enabled is just hit F for forward. All right. Start typing Evernote, hit return, and then I believe it's command enter. Command enter. 
don't forget the final step, which is to archive it. E. There you go. So then if I go to Evernote, will I see that? Is it that quick? Yep. Let's take a look. You might need to do this. Oh, a... damn. There it is. Beautiful. Oh, just, and it's got all the formatting and everything. Uh, so we did the Notes app, and the last downstream system is a read later app. I feel like Instapapers worked the best for me. So how do I, do I just need to, if it's already set up, am I good? So the key feature is, just as we did with the Notes app, you want to find the special custom Instapaper email address. All right, so I'm in Instapaper. I've got an email I've got to find. So to do this, we figured out you have to go to instapaper.com slash save slash email which then if you're logged in, it will show you this unique email. Okay, so now we've got that, and we can set that up here too as a contact, maybe? You have a browser tab uh, for Google Contacts open. Oh, perfect. Create contact, Instapaper, capture. See, now I almost have too many friends. <laughs> it's trying to become a little bit more. You mob. just doubled your friend circle. <laughs> so when would I send something to Instapaper versus Evernote, if that's not too heady of a question? No, good question. So I only like to send things to Evernote that I've read. Mm. I don't want to encounter something and have no idea what it is in Evernote. Oh. So sometimes I'll just happen to read an email or it just really catches my attention and, and then I decide I want to say this it goes to basically directly into my second brain yeah other times it's more like well I want to get to this later and then it goes to essentially like the waiting room which is instapaper so that article actually just now if I wanted to read it I'd send it to instapaper mm -hmm. if I just wanted to store it to refer to as like a good case study or copywriting example yeah I would send it to Evernote yeah okay cool is that our systems is that all of them that's it nice that wasn't so hard the fourth step is to streamline your workflow. You really have to think of email as a high velocity, a high speed production line, knowledge production line. So you might think, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, if I archive an email, it kicks me back to my inbox and then I just click on the next email, right? Wrong. Those extra few seconds combined with the much higher likelihood of you getting distracted by probably the latest, newest email at the very top of the list makes it very dangerous. You really have to remove every tiny bit of friction from your workflow. Uh, and that's really three features, turning on auto advance. So when you archive or delete one email, it sends you right into the next email. There's a setting you need to turn on where when you archive a message, instead of kicking you back to the inbox, oh, where you okay. can e so easily get distracted and taken off the track, that it just takes you to the very next email. Oh, here it is. Under the advanced tab, auto advance. Show the next conversation after you delete. Oh my goodness. Actually, this is gonna be life changing. So Thomas uh, is gonna get picked on a lot in this video, I can tell already. So E. Nice. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. There's just a handful of important shortcuts that will really save you a tremendous amount of time. Okay, here we go. Keyboard shortcuts on. There nice. we go. I'm just gonna test out my E button. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. The shortcuts that I use are Compose, which is C. So Compose is a new message. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, to Tiago, hey, thanks for teaching me about things. Uh, and then command enter. Yep. Nice, okay. And third, it's turning on conversation threads. So it looks like in settings, if we go down here, okay, conversation view on. And the reason that's important is if you process emails in the way that I'm suggesting, you don't want to find an earlier email, reply to it, but there's been a more recent reply to that thread. And so oh, you're basically that's like- that's what this is. That's what this is. So if someone else replies to a group thread, it will kick that message back up to the very top of your list with all the, the replies in the same thread. Oh, we gotta save this. Always click save changes. That was all the preparation. Now it's just practicing, okay. making these, these decisions as decisively and quickly as possible. You wanna just start at the oldest message. Okay. And remember, you can archive a reply or send it to one of the four downstream systems. So this was Julia being a boss in a very literal fashion. And I'm just on here for reference. I don't think there's anything for me to do here other than admire Julia. So should I just archive it? Yeah. Okay, E, done. Click up notifications. It's interesting, this, these notifications from other apps. I can't actually use ClickUp as my own task manager. There's yeah. always this friction of going there. Yeah. And so I would do control option spacebar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And if you can identify what the action, I would write it in there. But if you can't, I would just say review onboarding task. 
That's Wait, actually really don't, nice. don't use your mouse, just do enter. Oh. You should ideally be able to get through like 20 messages without touching your mouth. I'm gonna put that out of my hand, arm's reach to punish myself. <laughs> okay, cool, so I'm, I'm on my keyboard now. So now I can click E, right? Yep. Okay. That was pretty satisfying, actually. Do we have a signed vendor contract for Claire? I'm just gonna let Julia handle this. Can Great. I click E? Good. Nice. Deal with it. Will Manon, be careful. Yeah, that guy's a shady character. This is probably fishing. Uh, so I don't care about this. This is uh, probably something I should unsubscribe from. Yeah, actually, I, I would do that. Yeah, just got a new referral. This is the kind of thing I try to just eradicate as soon as possible. Like, okay. Something I truly just do not need to know. <laughs> I'm gonna create a task to unsubscribe. Once I get to a computer. Victoria, interesting. This is another kind of thing that I would train it to not put in your important inbox. Mm. Like, you can receive this, but you, you basically never want to see it unless you're looking for it. Interesting. So, uh, I could filter out drive shares, and that would be fine, probably? Yeah. Okay, so... Let's do that. So, there's a there's an interesting psychological, psychological thing that happens here, yeah. which is when you insist that you can only touch an email once, you'll actually start checking email less. In situations where you can't archive emails, yeah. if you only have like 30 seconds or a minute, you yeah. just won't even bother going there. Because you don't want to see something that you then have to remember to come back and archive later. <laughs> Interesting. So what I'm noticing too is I'm just automatically archiving anything or turning it into a to-do basically. Yeah. So for my work email, there actually isn't a lot of like reading material that naturally comes to my inbox. Yeah. Whereas if we were doing this for my personal email, there'd be a lot more that I'd be like, let me send that to Instapaper. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for being open to it. Using email, how it's supposed to be used as a collector of inputs, not a to-do system, not a knowledge management system, is just the very first step to creating a system that I call your second brain. If you'd like to learn more about how to cultivate personal habits around email, around note-taking, and productivity in general, subscribe to the channel first and check out Building a Second Brain, our book and online course. Thanks for watching, and now I'm going to go use the time I reclaimed from mindlessly checking my email and enjoy a wonderful day outside. Thank you.